Hello, welcome to Slingshot World TV's first ever cookery program. Now I don't have a cameraman and I'm really not prepared to do the book. Ah, I'll start the one again. Hello and welcome to Slingshot World TV's first ever cookery show. I've done a lot of cooking, I've done a lot of filming, I've never done cookery filming and I don't have a cameraman, hence I'm just waving in here. The food is the star. So without further ado, let's crack on. I'll stand up and you can witness the marvels of my... Uh, <laughs> Attire. Okay, pheasant terrine. You need a loaf tin, a bunch of pheasant, and stuff for what we call the force meat. Now, in this case, I've, uh, I'm making this well out of season, so uh, we're talking about um, the Wild Meat Company. Thanks, guys. Right, what you need to do first of all is line this here tin with a little bit of fat. I've got some uh, butter here. Do -do 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 -do. Funny enough, the little telly I did was with the guys who filmed with Keith Floyd. <laughs> they always involved him. Rather, Keith always involved the crew. Lovely fellas. Okay, very straightforward. That's just cooking for idiots, by the way. If you're a proper cook, then really, you don't need to be watching this. Just look up a recipe and go and cook it. Yeah, lovely bit of slightly posher than streaky back bacon. I'm going to just line that in there like that. Here we go. Let's get me pheasant chopper out of the way. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Just lending itself to neatly lining the tin there. And we'll, uh, it's a little bit like wallpapering. Do, 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 do. There we go. And uh, we'll leave some for the top as well. Right, I'm going to work quickly because it's a very warm day. This is the June before July heat wave that we had by the time you see that. Okay, lined with bacon. Now, you need to make force meat and you need to slice up the breasts. First of all, we're going to slice up the breasts. And uh, to that end, I'm going to take hold of the uh, Wild Meat Company's pheasant here and with a superb total ignorance of the packaging, just slice on in there. This thing is surgical sharp. Now, of course, being a uh, pheasant from a shoot, uh, this is not what we refer to in catapultry as lead-free. So you're going to have to look out, uh, trying to remove the shot at this point, I think. It's probably the fave. Right, here we go. Amazing service Wild Meat Company do if you're keen on your game cookery, but either as incompetent as me, or just not able to get out and get on a permission where pheasants have been roaming to. then the wild meat cupboard is a great option. Here we go, one pheasant breast removed. Dee -dee -dee. While we're on the same side of the bird, it's going to glide down here. And gently just, just take it apart through the cartilage here. You're not chopping any bones apart. We're finding the edge. Oh, nice fat bird. This, look at the yellow bits on here. There we go. Plop. One leg. Now you will notice, am I still on shot? Yes. That uh, when you keel and take the legs off a pheasant, you've got about 85% of the meat off there. <laughs> it's been some years, but you can tell I've done this before, can't I? There we go. There's the, uh, the pheasant breast. And here, I've just taken the they go off again with this lovely fat portion. Rather doo -doo -doo. Now, you can decide how healthy or unctuously naughty you make your dish. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to choose to use every last piece of schmaltz that came with this bird, as in all the fat is going. Yeah. <laughs> Close viewers may notice that looks a slightly risky angle. Right, I'm taking the uh, all this meat and fat off here and we're going to put this in a little bowl this is where all the brown meat's going now um, without bragging all right I'm bragging I once went to dinner at Heston Blumenthal's restaurant called um, dinner the Mandarin Oriental and he reckoned that the single tastiest piece of meat on an entire chicken 
Is this little piece here? Chicken. An entire piece of poultry. This is a game bird, it's a pheasant. There's that little eye at the back there, which is the recovery muscle for the wing. Now I could get slightly more bonkers here and <laughs> good practice cut away from myself at all times. I'm gonna spare you some of this by the time you get to watch the video, some of this will have been cut out. Okay, here we go. That's pretty much just a keel. But yes, I'm gonna take these bits off there. Do, 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 do. We're gonna pop you over here for a minute. Right, the legs. Take the drumstick and the thigh apart. There's only one bone through the thigh, and you can feel that quite easily. There we go. Now, the drumstick of a pheasant is, um, well, they prefer to run than to fly, these guys. So, what you need to do really is uh, take the meat carefully without doing yourself a mischief, and then Hold the knife down and pull it like you're pulling something off a string because you do not want any of that sinew in your meal. I'll show you some really strong bits here. Okay, what I'm going to do is use the awesomeness of Mick French's knife blade, just muller through everything. Look at that, that is a really strong little piece of sinew. As I say, what you do is remove it by just pulling it off like that. Do, do, do. La, la, la. Now then, whoop, that's what we've got here. Now that's all good. Whoop, I'm going to put that in the wrong pot. Do, 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 do. Cats can smell the fresh meat. They come to hang out a little bit. A little piece in there. I'll make a bit of a hash of this on camera. Do, do, do. I'm gonna save time a little there and crack on here. Right, here's the other leg. Do, do, do. Just glide through the, uh, just, just feel your way through the joint there. No crunching despite the fact I've got all the power to do that. Chopper, Mr. Mick French, talented fellow, but still choosing to rip and rend rather than slice where the sinews possibly involved. Sorry, I'm blithering. Okay, here we go. The brown meat. One more drumstick to go. Okay. It's funny as you can see just with my very second one, the techniques are a lot better. <laughs> it's been a long time since I pulled the sinews out of the pheasant thigh, drumstick even. There we go. Do do do. There we are. It will just uh, cover those remnants over there so we don't attract anybody we don't want at the dinner table. I'm going to sit down here, guys. Right, now then. <laughs> Never trust a skinny chef. Right. Now, I think I'll have to press them. 
here because I ordered some separate breasts as well as the one bird. Um, I think basically through laziness and the fact that I like the breast more than I like the dark meat. But the wild meat company can supply you with uh, you can supply you with whole birds in the feather if you're a taxidermist in actual fact. But there we go. Right. Now to start with, I think what we need to do now is think about a little bit of seasoning here. And I have a little smoked paprika. Not a lot. It's quite a mild thing, smoked paprika. And this. Garlic granules. Cayenne pepper. Very hot. Be careful. Do not flip about with that stuff. And a little bit of celery salt. That's stuff to be a little bit more generous with. The splidge. Rather lovely dry wine. Cherry style. Okay. There we go. Now we're, now we're talking. Splidgy. It's starting to smell like something you'd get in the kitchen. Let alone a field kitchen. Oh, the bacon's peeled off inside of the tin there. Do, 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 do. Get back on there, you fiend. Gonna have to do it with meat, I think. Okay, so. A layer of force meat on here. Now, what I should have done before getting all spidgy with the force meat is, of course, slice up the, uh, the breasts. But you know what? I don't think I'm gonna have to slice them that finely, in actual fact. Don't keep this hand reasonably clean. This hand's the meaty one. Okay, here we go. Do you know what? I'm a fat man. I can't really afford to eat the skin. Sorry. Nice and sharp, this blade. Okay, we're just cutting breast slices. And laying them into the tin here. The number of layers I want to make. This is two breasts. Delia says you should press your terrine. But you know what? I'm not going to leave it being pressed for ages, I'm just going to squeeze it with my hands a bit. Feeling pretty shot in there. I'm not keen on the uh, lead shot, that click was my stills camera turning itself off. Yeah, I'm not keen on the lead shot or the feathers, frankly, because well, they've come in from the outside world at high speed on a bit of lead. Yeah, let's remove all that. Chuck that in there. Seasoning. Sea salt here. Hey, I'm being salt bay. Right. A bit more force meat. Which I don't have a lot. I'm going to be cautious with it. Also, I'm conscious of how to go to work fast because it's a hot day and we do not want anybody to come. Join the feast here as a welcome. So I'm going to keep a second by second video here. Just going straight into the next layer of pheasant breast. Do you feel for any shot there? Do -do -do -do.
Yep, I've got a sill. I'll turn the camera back on. Back from the land of the stills. It refers to Caron again. Decent uh, layer of the force meat there. Which actually is really going to be sausages and bits of chopped up pheasant rather than properly blended. But frankly, in this heat and the time I have had, it simply wasn't happening. Okay, here we go. One more little uh, dash of seasoning. Paprika. That's the cayenne. Yes, I've got to check because that's stuff. Whoa, that's potent. <laughs> a little bit more salt. Here we go. Right. Oh, look, there's a there's a, there's a lead shot. Listen. <laughs> Dink. I just knew if I bumped it on the camera, you'd hear it. It's the sound man in me soul. Right, there we go. What you do once you've layered this up, you're supposed to leave it pressed somewhere to seal together. I'm going to probably pop it in the fridge for a little while, but you know what, there's so much protein going on in here that uh, I reckon it is just going to stick together like a stick together -y thing either way. There we go, there's the last breast. La, la, la. Here's another shot. Dink. Sorry about the light, it's so bright and the sunshine that you wouldn't see anything anyway. And uh, this is about production deadlines as well. So, finally, we're going to top this off with some bacon. So it makes a lovely little parcel. I say finally, actually, I actually have an idea for a little sprig of something else as well, actually. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Make sure it stays sealed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is a pleasant terrain. I haven't quite finished it yet though. Just going to turn around. I'm heading for the herb garden. Right, a little bit of rosemary and uh, chives, including a flower. Salt on the top and uh, the paprika here. Well, ho, that is done. It's how you make a terrine. You then Pop it in here, up to its neck in water, and bake it in the oven. The next shot you see will be it finished.